Hello, and welcome to my May reading wrap up. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Book Talks with Miss Thomas. I am Miss Thomas, and I like talking about books. Now, in addition to the uh, book blessings videos that I did, I read some other books. So in addition to those books, I want to tell you about some other books that I read in the month of May. Um, the first one I DNF'd, so I'm just going to tell you that up front. I waited for this book. I was on the list to get this book. I was really excited because it sounded like a funny book about elderly people, and you know I'm a sucker for um, cozy books about elderly people. This was not cozy. It was not funny. It was crass and vulgar, and I ended up DNFing it, and it was called Silver Alert. So Silver Alert was the story of a man. He was older. He was on his third wife. His third wife had dementia and he finds this woman who does manicures that for whatever reason can uh, sort of walk the wife off the ledge, if you will. She calms her down and has a really uh, relaxing effect on this uh, elderly woman with dementia. And I liked that aspect of the book and I listened for a while, but I just couldn't deal anymore with all of the blasphemy and the profanity and the sexually crude comments in the book. So I ended up DNFing oh, I did one. need my, uh, you know, granny fix. <laughs> and so I read High Cotton, which is a part of the granny series. I've talked a lot about the granny series. This is the third one, I think, in the book, in the book series. And this one is about about, um, well, in this one, you need to read the first two because in this one, um, Lillian gets out of jail. So that's exciting. Um, if you haven't heard me talking about the Granny series, In for a Penny is the first one. And Lillian is this little old lady and she gets arrested. She goes to jail and she um, teaches etiquette class in jail and it's really cute. And then um, she makes a friend in jail, sort of a frenemy named Big Martha. And she's like this this lady who kind of rules the roost in jail and then she's got these friends at home who solve mysteries and in the first book in for a penny they're trying to solve a mystery to get Lillian out of jail um and one of the friends is like her name is uh serendipity I think and she goes by Sarah and she's like this trippy hippie lady and she teaches yoga and then there's this other um lady who uh is like this tool belt wielding <laughs> um mrs mrs home improvement lady and it's just a really sweet fun uh series and so in high cotton um the ladies team up again and this time lillian gets out of jail and has a hard time with the friendships of the women that were formed in the first two books so um, I loved that book, but I recommend you read the first two. This Bird Has Flown, um, I DNF that one. It was the story of a one-hit wonder, a woman who performed uh, a big musical song, and she tried to make some sort of feminist statement with it, um, with some crude pose, and she wore a pink wig. I'm not really sure if she was supposed to be, you know, uh, sort of inspired by uh, the musical artist Pink. I have no idea. I DNF'd it because because the woman was just so, uh, she needed a man, you know, and I have trouble with women like that. I'm not a romance reader anyway, but this wasn't so much a romance as a woman. She, uh, she gets dumped by this one guy and he's getting married. So she has a hookup with another guy and then she moves in with another guy. And I, I, ugh, I was just like enough already. Yeah, that's not why I signed up for this book. I thought it would be about a woman and her, her friendship with her, uh, her musical manager who actually seemed very nice and fun. I would have loved a book about her instead. She offered the woman um, a chance to live with her for a little while and sort of regain her music career. And she ends up, this woman telling the story, she ends up moving out with yet another man. And she was just... I don't know. I just got tired of all the, the hookups and the men and I felt like that's not really what I was interested in. So I DNF'd that one. Starfish Audio. I loved this one. I definitely highly recommend Starfish. I got the audio book and um, it was the story of a girl who struggled with her weight. 
And um, by that, I mean, she needed two seats on an airplane. She was, um, you know, very overweight. And she talks throughout the book about her experience and what it's like to be a girl growing up with a weight problem. And she, it's called Starfish because she feels light in the pool. She likes to float in the pool. Um, she makes a wonderful friend who lives next door. And that uh, young lady is... Um, I think she's Hispanic. And so at one point, uh, they're both in a restaurant and someone is really mean to both the two girls. And one because she's overweight and the other because she's not your typical looking uh, white girl, I guess. And so the, uh, the neighbor, the friend asks the overweight girl, she says, am I an illegal or do I look like an illegal or something? And I thought, wow, you know, everyone is alienated for one reason or another. And I thought the book portrayed that really beautifully. And I do recommend Starfish. Another book that I read, and I've had this one, I've talked about this one a few times, should I read it? I finally got around to reading Under the Table, and I was not real thrilled with it. I read it, I finished it. The only thing I would say about Under the Table that I liked was, again, it I had just read Starfish, and Under the Table also dealt with a girl who struggled with her weight. And in this case, she was pretty comfortable and happy with her body. There's a little bit of meanness, uh, toward her because of her weight, but it was very um, subtle. It wasn't really a part of the plot, but I definitely applaud the author for making that something in the book. Like, yes, I have a weight problem and I'm still a very worthy woman. And I liked that about the book. The rest of it, meh, it was a lot of like, you know, she has trouble with uh, her marriage. And so she jumps into a relationship with another guy. I don't know why these books are pushing um, romantic relationships on people. That's really not what I'm interested in when I read a book. I thought it was going to be about a book, start, a book about a woman starting her own catering business and, um, you know, like a scrappy woman getting ahead in the business world. And it was just another, oh, does he love me? Does he not love me? Boo hoo. I, it's not for me. I also um, tried to listen to some audio books with my teenager on a road trip. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a separate video about that. I may, I may not. But the long and short of it is that um, my teenager was in no way interested in the audio books that I selected. And I couldn't really blame him. <laughs> Sorry, this is a pretty negative video. But um, these, these audio books for teenagers that I selected based on what, you know, Google told me would be interesting interesting to a teenage boy were very disappointing. And so he had the AirPods in and wasn't paying attention. And I gave up and I just started listening to a book that I thought would be interesting. And I did enjoy that one. So I'll end on that high note. I very much enjoyed Arsenic and Adobo. And that is the first um, cozy mystery in a series. The series is called Tita Rosie's Kitchen. Yes, Tita Rosie's Kitchen. And Arsenic and Adobo is book one from that cozy mystery series. In this case, um, the women in the book are Filipino and they are running a kitchen and they just do a lot of, there's a lot of cozy, fun food, a lot of cooking. And the main character, um, her name is Lila. I think it's Lila. And she moves back home after trying to make it as a, a big cook on her own. I think a pastry chef in Chicago. And she moves back home with her aunties. And there's, uh, I think, four of them. And um, she tries to rescue the family business. And she's got this high school sweetheart who is really uh, nasty to her. And he is now uh, a food critic. And he writes just really negative, mean, critical reviews of of her family's restaurant and some other restaurants in the community. And he ends up dying in her restaurant. And she, of course, is accused of poisoning him. So she spends the book trying to figure out what actually happened to him and come to find out he has a lot of enemies because of his mean restaurant reviews, which are usually unfair and unfounded. So that was a fun little mystery. And I will probably continue with that series. So I recommend That concludes it. my short and sweet little video video, my May wrap up. And the reason it's short is because so many of the books I read are in my book blessing videos, but these are just a few I wanted to make mention of um, because they didn't make it into that video, but they are books I read in the month of May. I hope you're out there reading a great, great book too and having a great time and getting ready for summer. Bye for now.